Hey, my name is Joe Gilder from Personas. Let's talk about the different tools you can use with your mouse, the different mouse-related, cursor-related tools in Studio One. There might be a couple of little features here that you didn't know about. But first, real quick story. Gregor and I, probably two years ago, both got into chess pretty heavily. If you watch some of Gregor's videos, you might see little chess pieces around. He's really gotten into it. Um, and one of the things about chess is it's really easy to learn the basics and then you can spend a lifetime learning new skills, new strategies, new techniques. So I want you to view, you may view the videos on this channel as I got to learn all this stuff before I make music. That is 100% not the case. You can learn just the basics of how to create a track, hit the record button like this and start recording and you can make music that way. Think of it like chess. You To get started is fairly simple. You learn the moves, the basics, and you're good to go. And then the videos we put out here on our YouTube channel are just new strategies. And I'd encourage you just to grab one of them and go try it out on a song. And then once you get that figured out, maybe come back and grab a different one. Don't feel like you have to watch through all of these and implement all of these before you can make music. That's completely backwards. It's kind of like if I learn to play chess and then I want to go learn all the different openings and all the different defense strategies, the, what they all, all the grandmasters of chess recommend is maybe just pick one and learn it intimately, right? Because there are like something like a few trillion different possible variations per game of chess. So you could literally spend years focusing on one opening or one defense and learning all the intricacies. If they do this, I can do this. If they do this, I can do this. So it's the kind of the same way with audio software. We make this to be a powerful tool and it can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be, but you don't need to know how everything works to get great results. Great example, I've been making music for over a decade right around a decade with Studio One specifically. Um, and there's so much stuff I didn't know even before I came to work for Personas, stuff that I've learned from Gregor that I didn't even know existed in Studio One. Did that keep me from making music? No, it just made it even better for me. So let's dive in. So there are a couple of different ways you've probably noticed if you've poked around Studio One at all of how to, how to interact with pieces of audio. So this is a vocal track here. And you'll notice up here, let's, let's just hang out up here for a second. This is, in part of the toolbar shows us, especially here, shows us several different tools that we can use with our mouse. So this cursor here, this arrow right now, can switch into any of these for a specific purpose. And you'll notice they may not seem super... If you've used DAWs before, you may sort of get what's happening, but if you haven't, it might not make a lot of sense. So first thing, I'm going to turn this off for a second. Um, I want you to notice this is the arrow tool, and the ones with the little arrow, little triangle there, give us a couple of things to select. So this first section is our primary tool, meaning what is like what will the mouse be in its default state? And if this arrow is selected, then it's going to be just the normal, what do we call it, this, the arrow tool, <laughs> great name, um, which means all it's going to do is allow me to click and drag. If I hover over any portion of a piece of audio, I'm going to be able to click and drag it around. That's pretty much it. I can select it, I can delete it, undo, I can drag it around. That's the arrow tool. The next tool, these are the two that I use the most. This is the range tool. If we switch to that, then anytime we're over a piece of audio, you can see it turns into this little plus sign. And now if I click and drag here, check it out, it doesn't move at all, right? It's just selecting, no matter where I click on this audio, it's not clicking and dragging, it's not even selecting the audio, it's just creating what we call a range. Once that's created, I could do things like hit delete, right, and get rid of that, but that's the range tool. Now, this, is the, this isn't the, really the way that I like to use it. So, you can use it this way where you go one, two, one, two, and you can see these are mapped to basically the first several numbers on your keyboard. So right now, as I press one and two on my keyboard, one is the arrow, two is the marquee tool. So if you want to switch back and forth, three is the splitter tool, things like that. Um, or the, what do we call it? I'm sorry, I always forget. The split tool, yeah. Um, but there's actually a better way of using this that doesn't require so much switching. Um, that was one of the first things when I started using Studio One. I had used Pro Tools extensively, and I had used Logic for a few years too. This reminded me a little bit of the way Logic worked, and I never learned how to do this. It always seemed a little clunky, like... Oh, I want to select this section. Oh, I got to come up here and select this tool and then come back and select it. So knowing the keyboard shortcut is a helpful first step, but there's actually an even better way to do it. So if you come back up here and you click on this right there, 
that says link arrow and range tools. That means these first two are now going to be linked and you can have both available to you whenever you want. And the way that works is when the when the cursor is in the top half of a, an event, it becomes the cursor or the range tool. I'm getting all my words confused, I'm sorry. And when I drop down below to the bottom half, it becomes the arrow tool. So very easily, I don't have to press any buttons, it's literally just here it drags and selects a range, here it moves around, and I can do things like do the crossfade and all that on the bottom. It's a very cool thing, I'm in this mode 99% of the time. However, there's occasionally a time where I wanna just split this event, say right here. I wanna make use this tool, which is the split tool, which I can get to by clicking here or by pressing three, and I can cl click to separate this particular event. Problem is, that's a clunky way to work. I don't like that. I found a workaround years ago, and I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but when we're in, when I press one, we're back into our mode where we're using both of these at the same time, and then check out what happens when I keep pressing one. I discovered this by accident years ago. You see that little blue line that's moving around? So that is telling me what my alternate tool is. And the way we access our alternate tool is by holding down on the Mac, it's Command, and on the PC, I'm pretty sure it's Control. So this way, if I do it like this and set the alternate to the split tool, I now have one, two, and three, my three most used tools, available to me without having to go and play that game. So check out how that works. Here is a piece of audio. Uh, if I'm up here, it's a range tool. If I'm down here, it's the arrow tool. And if I hold down command, now it is the split tool. So here's an example of how that would work. Let's say this vocal came in early. I could do split, split, command option, drag that around, X to crossfade, and then I can move on down the song. That's kind of how that would work. So another way I could say, let's use all three tools on this example. Let's say this needs to come back a little bit. I can say, I don't want this area, delete. I wanna cut this right here, and then I wanna use my arrow tool to bring it back or to drag it over, okay? So I'm using all of those without having to press the one, two, and three keys at all. I'm accessing three different tools. The only thing I have to do is I, I usually have my thumb just sitting here on the command button, so whenever I need to access the split tool, I can. Now occasionally, maybe you need a different tool. Um, like if you're using, Honestly, the split tool is the one I use the most. Any other ones, I'll just switch to them briefly because I don't use them all that much. Like the transform tool, really, or the bend tool, really cool tool, I just don't use it all that much. One thing you should also know is if you have a, an event like this where I've used the clip gain, see these little volume adjustments? That's the clip gain envelopes on this piece of audio. When, I'm, when I hover over the very top of the area, now my cursor changes into three different tools based on where I am over the audio. Down in the bottom half, it's the arrow. When I cross the center line into the top half, it becomes the range tool. And then this kind of top quarter, it becomes trim. And so trim allows me to take whatever's underneath. If it's automation or if it's this clip gain envelope, it allows me to move that. So then I can do a combination of range tool to select all of these, trim tool to move up and down. And I haven't had to touch my keyboard to do any of that. And I could even like use the arrow tool to drag it and move it over. All of those are possible without me having to use any keyboard shortcuts. This is a workflow you've probably, if you've seen me work, you may have wondered, okay, what, how did he switch to that tool? What is happening right now? Um, why, why did he, how did he get to the thing? You may just think I, I'm not as fast as Joe is when I see him work. This is one of the big secrets. So set your system up like this. Click on this to make sure both of these are selected. Press the number one until the split tool is selected and then leave it like that for, I'd say 99.5% of the time. Um, Cause those are the three tools that I find most useful. So now I can come in, I can cut there. I can select and delete there. I can drag there without having to touch anything except pressing command to switch to the split tool. Okay, cool. If you haven't messed around with them, if you have another way of working, this will feel clunky at first if you haven't worked this way, but I'm pretty certain this will be your new way of doing it uh, because it is so quick and so fast and it makes a lot of sense once you wrap your head around it. It's a very intuitive workflow. All right, that's it for me. Happy editing. See you in the next one.